Now, like with the previous problem, um, I wanna show you another way of solving this one because maybe you're like, I'm a bit sick of Pythagoras' theorem, we've been doing this a lot, okay? There is another way to solve this. You might say it's a bit more direct because I am still gonna put some um, constructions on, uh, but they're gonna be slightly different because um, I'm not gonna put this new sort of imaginary rectangle around it. Um, however, it's gonna require a slightly bit more sophisticated maths and you'll see why in a second. Have a look here, right? Um, I don't know if when you look at this, your instinct is to draw that shape on the outside. My instinct was actually to draw um, a different kind of uh, shape in here once I had my um, diagonal. So if I put that same, in fact, I'm just gonna copy it. I'm gonna put that same diagonal there. Let's just grab that since I've already drawn it. Oh, I grabbed the triangle. That's not what I wanted. Uh, let's try, I'm still grabbing. I'm just gonna delete it, because then I can get the real thing that I want. There we go. Okay, so let's put this back in place like so. Okay, now, how else can I find what this length is? Well, you might be able to have noticed that this length here can actually sit in multiple different shapes, not just the square in which we found it, not just the rectangle that we created before, but if I just join up this length here, see how I've got that corner there in the middle, and um, join it to that corner there of the square, what I've got here is uh, noting that this diagonal here is the thing that we're after. This diagonal. That was much thicker than I intended. This diagonal here is what I'm after, but it is the longest side in, you can see there's this, um, this triangle here, which is, um, it's kind of got this obtuse angle in here, right? Now the reason why this length is something which jumps out at me is because that three and that four are two, of, two thirds of a Pythagorean triad, right? This is a five centimeter length here. So being that this is a five, and this is a six, um, I've got the, these two known angles, and then all I need to do is relate them using what piece of information will get me from two sides and this angle in between to the third side, enter, this is the cosine rule, right? Now obviously the cosine rule is slightly more involved <laughs> than Pythagoras' theorem, and that's why this is probably less of an elegant approach, like this required um, really, really simple maths, like you could convince someone who'd not heard any trigonometry that this is true, but I can still do this provided that I can work out um, what's going on with this angle here in this corner, right? Because the cosine rule requires um, the magnitude of not just this angle, but actually the angle all the way across in this 5, 6, D triangle, okay? Now I've got a right angle there, that's good, but how do I work out what's going on with this theta? Well, what I'm gonna do is use the fact that this theta sits in a right angled triangle. It's the three, four, five triangle that I noticed before, right? So what I'm gonna note down is that in this triangle, I can say cos theta is adjacent on hypotenuse, which in this case, let's see where the theta is, adjacent is three, hypotenuse is five. So that's three over five. Now, I also am going to need later on, and you'll see why in a second, um, the sine of this angle. So I might as well just note it down while I'm doing the cosine. It's going to be four over five, and pay attention in a moment for where this is going to be useful. So if I wanted to work out uh, what this length was, then I'm going to have to um, use the cosine rule to find uh, this, d squared equals um, six squared plus five squared minus two times five times six, uh, cause of this, right? This bigger angle, okay? Now I should probably just say that um, right out the gate. I should say that uh, d squared is going to be, well in fact, you know what? Let's actually just write the normal cosine rule. So it's c squared equals, the way I remember it is, it's Pythagoras' theorem, a squared plus b squared, minus 2ab cos c. This is the kind of compensation factor for the fact that I don't have a right angle triangle. This part is Pythagoras, which works when uh, c is 90 degrees because cos of 90 degrees just gives you zero. And that leaves you just with regular Pythagoras' theorem. But when c is not 90 degrees, you have to compensate. Either you have a longer hypotenuse um, or a shorter one, depending on what that included angle is equal to, okay? So you can see I need cos of this angle here, which is, that angle there, is going to be uh, theta plus 90 degrees. So to work out cos of that, you can see that's actually the next piece of the puzzle. That's why I need cos and sine. So let's work out what that is. I'll keep it in orange actually, since it's what I um, started writing. I need cos of theta plus 90 degrees, and it's related to cos of theta and sine of theta. 
Now, what I'm gonna do is, uh, yeah, I'll carry on this working in orange, right? Um, there's two ways to go about this, okay? The first way is if you are good with your identities for, um, uh, what would we call this? I guess these are kind of compound angles, right? It's There's a theta, but there's also a 90 degree in here, right? Uh, you could use your knowledge of graphing, which I'll show you in a second, just to immediately know what this is going to be equal to in terms of these two ratios. Or alternatively, and you can see, it's not just trigonometry that you need, you also need to know some trigonometric expansions. Um, you might remember that cos of A plus B is it's a cos cos sine sine expansion, right? So it's cos of the first angle, cos of the second angle, take away sine of the first angle, sine of the second angle. So again, if you're someone who is uh, from an earlier year and you're like, I haven't met any of this, right? Uh, in, in Australia where I teach, you don't meet this stuff until year 11. Uh, maybe you're looking at this and thinking, yeah, you know what, Pythagoras theorem, not looking so bad now, but I'm still going to see where this leads. Uh, and it's a nice confirmation of what the answer is from a very different uh, approach, okay? Now, I'm going to continue running on with this. I know what cos of 90 and sine of 90 are equal to. Cos of 90, I actually stated it just now, is zero. And sine of 90 is actually just one. So all I end up with is minus sine theta, which I actually just got from this right angle triangle up above. So it's negative four on five. Now, you might have known, and I sort of alluded to this earlier, you might have known that cos of theta plus 90 uh, degrees would be equal to negative sine theta um, without going through this expansion in another way. Let me show you, right? Uh, I'm going to need, let's put a little bit of extra space here because I'm not up to my last question yet. All right, here we go. So um, you might have thought, okay, what is, um, I'll make this a bit bigger. Um, what is cos of 90 degrees? What does it actually look like? Well, if I were to draw... Let's move that up a little bit. I didn't position that very well, did I? If we were to draw a very, very rough cos curve, right? So here is a set of axes. Let's go with orange. So here is what the cos curve looks like. That's pretty horrendous, but it'll do for now. It only needs to be rough. What is that 90 degrees, that plus 90 degrees, what does it do to the graph? And the answer is it shifts it horizontally 90 degrees. Which direction? Answer, it's in the opposite direction to this. This is a plus, which sounds like it's going to um, the right, but actually it's going, it's, it's a reverse relationship there. So I'm gonna take this graph and I'm just gonna draw that same thing, but 90 degrees to the, uh, to the left. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is, let's draw it in a color like this. Um, if you imagine picking a few critical spots like here, 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 and here and moving them to the left 90 degrees because remembering this is 90 this is 180 here in the middle like so it's not very accurate i know this is 270 and this would be at 360 right so what i'll do is i'll move all of them over so they end up uh here 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 and here i hope you can see um the movement uh i might just draw it this way this one's moved that way this one's moved that way this one's moved that way and, wow, that's horrendous. Let's fix that up. This one's moved across to there. All right, what graph do we actually get? Well, you can see if I go from left to right, I'm going to get this kind of shape. Wow, that's so bad. I've got to do it again. This kind of shape here. And then because I've got a little bit left over, you can see this needs to sort of complete down like so. All right. So what I've just drawn here in blue is cos of theta plus 90 degrees because the orange graph was just regular old cos of theta. Now, have a look at it. Have a look at this graph that I've drawn here. Can you see, if I get rid of the cos graph, right? Can you see that this is the same as a sine graph, but upside down? So that is why cos of theta plus 90 degrees is the same as negative sine theta. It's, here's the sine theta graph and I've just flipped it upside down. So that was another way that you could reason that cos of theta plus 90 degrees equals negative sine without having to go through the expansions. But you still needed to know this fact up here. Okay, so now that I've got cos of theta plus 90, that's, that's that angle right in there. Let's do it in orange because that's where we've been doing it, right? So now that I know what cos of that angle is, I can use cosine rule, right? So I can say d squared because that is the, let's just go back, that is this longest side of the triangle here is going to be equal to 5 squared plus 6 squared. There's the Pythagoras part of the cosine rule and here comes the compensating factor. So it's double 
the product of the two sides, and then cos of theta plus 90 degrees, which we just went and evaluated in um, an orange up here. So I'm just gonna do a straight substitution in a second. All right, let's go ahead and tidy this up. So you can see this is 25 plus 36. Take away two times five times six is just 60. The cos thing, actually let's just put it in orange to keep it going, that's negative four over five. So you can see that I'm going to get Let's have a look here. So 25 plus 36, that's 61. And then here, the negatives are going to cancel with each other. Give me a positive. 60 divided by 5 is 12. And so 12 times 4 is 48. So I'm going to get plus 48 here. So what am I finding? D squared equals, oh, surprise, surprise, 109, like I evaluated when I was just doing it with the regular old Pythagoras, once I saw it in that rectangle that I constructed. So again, like I did earlier, I'm gonna pause there because I think you know what to do with the rest of it, but it is really reassuring, even using quote unquote more sophisticated maths, um, you still end up with the same solution.